I am going to really enjoy this demonstration, not only because I love what I do, I love sharing my knowledge with everyone, but also because I'm a bit of a science geek and I have set up at home um, a camera and my computer and all sorts of things so that I can do live videos. So you'll see as I go through this video that I'm recording for you, I am going to show you lots of different things um, and the subject today is drawing self-portraits. Sit back with a cup of coffee and I uh, hope you enjoy. Or a cup of tea, of course. The first thing to say, and, I, and I've got some notes here, so I'm going to be referring to them, is there's not a whole lot of difference to drawing a self-portrait um, compared to drawing somebody else's portrait. However, um, of course, if you're doing a self-portrait from, portrait from a mirror, that's pretty much where um, the, the similarity, or no, the differences end. Um, and my recommendation when you're doing a self-portrait is actually not to do it from a mirror. Um, as you know, a mirror is a mirror image, so it's not what people are looking at. Um, it also uh, means that you're getting a side view of yourself and you're needing to look in the same position every time you try and turn your head. Um, it's not a, not a problem to get a side view. Um, and you might like the fact that you're live, so you're drawing from life. Um, but to be pure about drawing, drawing yourself from a mirror, you actually need to set up two mirrors so that you get a reflection of your reflection so that you get turned back round again. Um, with today's technology, especially with selfies on your phones, it is so much easier to have a photograph taken of yourself and work from a photograph. And many of us, when we're doing standard portraits um, or portraits of people we love or, or even just people from magazines um, or off the internet, we work from photographs. So, the next thing to bear in mind, uh, when you're taking a selfie, which I actually don't recommend for this purpose, um, but you can use a selfie if nobody else is, is there, check that your camera is not on a mirror, mirrored image. Most selfies are mirrored images. Now, if you have an iPhone, there is an option to turn it off mirror. And if you have an Android, which is um, like me, I've got a, a Samsung phone, you do not have that option to turn your screen off um, when you're doing selfies. So that's pretty much the same as doing it from a mirror. So that's another reason why I don't recommend selfies. Find someone to take a photograph of, of you. Uh, when we get back to normal life, I guess, that's, that's when we'll need to. Um, but you can take a, a, a photograph of yourself from your computer as well. Why am I recommending that you take a new photograph of yourself instead of using one that you've got online? It depends on what kind of photograph you've got online. If they are holiday snaps, then your, your portrait, your face, is going to be way too small for the image you want to draw a good portrait. So I highly recommend that when you are taking a portrait of yourself, if you've got um, a, a little stand and you can put a timer on your camera and then attach your camera to your computer to download that photograph. So most um, point and click cameras these days do have that option and that won't be a, um, a mirrored image. Try to make sure that you are close enough to the camera so that you fill the screen. Pretty much what you're looking at now. Um, I'm hoping my face is filling your screen. Okay, obviously it depends what else you want to put in the picture. If you want to do a painting, then you might need a nice background. Those things need to be considered. The other thing is, uh, if you can see my eyes wandering off to the right, it's because I'm looking at my computer screen to see what I look like. So, the other thing that you need to consider when you're taking a photograph of yourself so that you can do it, a, a portrait of yourself is choose the lighting. So you don't want a flash because that will capture a fairly 
um, bright look on your face we really do need to see some shadows the light that you're seeing me in now is not too bad although i have taken a photograph that we will that i am going to work from but you can see some oh picked up the wrong the wrong hand i'm so used to looking at the mirror you can see some shadows on the side of my face there underneath my brow um, on that side a little bit more shadow down the side of my neck my i've got a light set up um, over here so that's projecting light onto my forehead and you can see as i put my hand there that casts light so think about um, when you're taking the photographs and now with digital photographs we can take as many as we want think about what light that's um, and shadow that's creating on your face you can see I've got bags under my eyes and in the photograph that I took that to work from I've got bags under my eyes there so if you want to do a bit of cos cosmetic surgery while you're about it <laughs> feel free to do that so think about the shadows on your face when you do a self uh, um, a selfie okay I've actually printed out my picture um, but I'm going to show you a couple of ways in which you can begin to tackle um, your self-portrait. It is a good idea to print it out, um, although of course you can work off your computer screen. Um, in fact, your image might be much nicer on the computer screen. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, gridding up and that sort of thing. Um, so why don't I get um, straight to it? And I am going to change my camera view now to looking from above. Okay, now you can see that I have put my 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 face. I have produced. I have printed that out onto a an A4 size piece of paper. That's about the the size that you want. You don't want smaller than that to be able to draw a decent portrait. Now the the image that I have of myself on the on the computer screen of this exact photograph isn't as uh, um, is much much better than this photograph. The reason I've pointed I've printed it out is because I want to just quickly give you a method of um, gridding up if you are um, if you enjoy doing that sort of thing. It is a very very valid thing to do. I don't know if any of you are watching a British show called um, Portrait Artist of the Year. You can find it on YouTube, but it is on Facebook, um, not on Facebook, on, um, what's it called? Uh, Foxtel. And many of those artists, professional artists, use gridding up. So I quickly wanted to demonstrate what that's all about. And what I've done is I've drawn a grid on a document sleeve, which are easily... Um, found at uh, Officeworks, that sort of thing. If you're not going out shopping, I found some documents at home that had a cover on of this acetate, it's called, or overhead projection. And you can use something like that. Now I know that the light is causing lots of reflection, reflection on that. So you'll need to tape that down with a bit, with a bit of masking tape or um, put a, a, a bulldog clip at the top to keep it where it is. Now, I'm going to show you, um, sorry, getting back to the document sleeve, this is actually the easiest thing to do because you can just slip your photograph and you can use this for lots of photographs inside. Now, I have a method of, of, of using my document sleeve, of, of drawing the grid, so that I don't actually have to measure anything. And I love that technique. I think it's a pain in the neck when we have to measure five inches and two and a half centimeters and all of that sort of thing. And all you have to do is find yourself a ruler in my instance, I've actually cut myself a bit of board because I didn't want uh, my squares to be so narrow. And the size of the squares on your document sleeve need to depend on how big your photograph is. So with a photograph this size, 
I have cut, oh, I think it's about just under four centimeters wide. So the only measuring I needed to do was for this. And what you do is, I'll do it on the back. You must use a permanent marker to do this. You don't worry about what's inside. I've just got that white there so that you can see what I'm doing. And can you see that I've put my ruler, my made ruler, on the edge of my document sleeve? I haven't, no, you can't see. There you go. Now, I haven't put it right at the end. I've actually put it where the inside pocket ends. And you simply draw a line like that. Move your ruler up. Draw another line, move your ruler up, and continue going up. And then you simply turn it the other way. Make sure that it is dead straight each time, otherwise you will have crooked lines. So it's a pretty simple exercise, and you don't have to measure anything. And because you're using the same width ruler, you get perfect squares. So that's a really easy way of doing it. And that's exactly how I did this one. Um, excuse the reflections there. I'll hold it like that so that you can see. Right. Of course, you also need to grid up your page. Now, if you wanted a portrait that's the same size as your photograph, if it's a decent size, for your portrait, I would not draw any smaller than that a4 size. Um, in fact, this is slightly smaller than A4 size because I've got it horizontal. So if you wanted the same size, you can use the same size ruler. However, I have actually drawn up uh, or cut a larger size because I want to make my portrait bigger on my paper. This is an A3 sketchbook that I have got. And what I did was I counted up how many rows and columns I needed and I decided that and this is helpful too I'm going to put a piece of tape along there because I don't need to do those squares and I'm going to put a piece of tape there so I've got four columns across and I've got one, two, three, four, five, and a bit columns up. Actually, I remember when I was testing this out, getting this result, I'm going to turn it this way, upside down, because I actually want five exactly, and now I'm not bothered by that little bit at the bottom so one two three four five I probably don't need to put this piece down but I will okay so that can be the picture that you are working off if you're working from a grid um, and as I said before there's nothing wrong with working from a grid and a nice little trick if you are um, finding that you are drawing your eyes and nose and, and mouth and your features all from your head and not what you're actually seeing. It's a lovely trick to turn your picture upside down and just draw it upside down. Now I'm, I keep forgetting to color it to work hard so that I can, um, so that the camera can pick it up. Yep, I can see it can. If we just put some shading in and we do not worry about features. So if light is coming in from the top, which generally it is, might be sideways from the top, but either you've got lights on the top coming from your ceiling or you've got the sun, we can actually 
draw a fairly useful face figure, face figure, portrait, by only putting in shadows. So I've already given you the information just by those shadows that um, I'm going to be drawing a face. So it doesn't need the outline at all. Okay, I will talk about all these proportions and things as well. But you can see something simple as that can give you an immediate definition of a face. So what I'm going to ask you to do when you're drawing your portrait of yourself is not to concentrate on features, but to concentrate on shapes of tone. Now, if I want to show that the light's actually coming from the side, I can put some shadow across the side as well. And that can help us to form the side of the head. Yes, Karen, the shading goes across the lip as well. Okay, so that's a pretty good rendition of a face. And um, I wanted you to see that so that you could see that you can do it just with shading. And now I'm going to show off another clever trick. I have got the photograph that I'm using. You can see that's a much better um, finish on it than, than the photograph um, that I had showed you. This photograph that you're looking at now is actually in Photoshop. And I'm going to go into Photoshop and show you that um, I'm going to draw shadows over my face. Oh, I do love technology. So that's the portrait that I'm going to be using. You can see um, the shadows on my face and I'm actually going to draw on top of it with a nice red pen. Okay, watch what happens. as I put the shadows on. Okay, so I'm not being particularly um, careful. Oh, what happened there? I'm, uh, I'm putting these red marks where the shadows are and where the strong shadows are I am putting more red and where the lighter shadows are I'm leaving it a bit looser. Looks like I've got a beard at the moment. Okay, very gentle shadow there. Strong shadow on the mouth. Bit of creases there, obviously that's a shadow. Shadow under the nose. The shadow under the nose is always strong. And a little bit less strong there. And can you see that there's some shadow there? There's definitely lots of shadows on my eye, right over the top. And a shadow there. There's a bit of a lag on my computer. And there's a shadow under my cheek there. I've got a little bit of a smile. There's a bit of a shadow there. There's shadow right into my hair. Looks very odd. Should I put my bag shadows in? There you go. There's some heavy shadow there under my hair. 
Now I'm going to turn off. When you do your portrait from a grid, it is simply a matter of following square by square and looking at where things are relative to the square. So I'm leaving a white corner there because there's a white corner there. And I can see that my hair is cutting across there. So use it very, very generally. Don't worry about using it too specifically. So I can see I've made a mistake there because I've brought that hair halfway down that square and it's only a tiny bit in there. So I'm going to use an eraser, which I never do. You know me. I'm trying to use this accurately. My shoulder is going is above halfway. So I've got a shoulder there sticking out and that's a little bit there of my shirt. Okay, and you continue on in this fashion until you've drawn all the bits that you want and they're all where they should be. Don't tr try not to get overly caught up in the accuracy of this. It is to give you a, a hand in getting things in proportion. There's something bothering me here. I don't know if I've, that's probably halfway. So check as you go. So you can see I, that way I did it quite flippantly, but it's actually closer to halfway. Check as you go that everything is fitting in with everything else. And move all around the, the squares. That's about halfway. That's within that square, Karen. So what have I done wrong? That's gone halfway across. Okay, so I'm rushing through this. I'm not paying as much attention as I should be because I actually want to just get on with drawing the, the portrait the way I usually do, which is not with a grid. And that is not necessarily the only way to do it. So don't feel that you have to do it without a grid. This is just showing you how to go about it. So you just look at where these lines are. So the inner edge of my face, my eye is on that line. You can see it there. And the outer edge is only about halfway across. So I'm drawing way too big. So really pay attention to you're doing okay before we get to drawing actual eyes and this is often how people start their portrait is they you know draw a nice arm and eye and then they know it's an eye with the part and then they know it's that and they start straight away with features and I find that if you do that you end up with whoop, you end up with proportions that are way, way out. So before we get going, I'm going to give you a little bit of a heads up on, um, on some proportions um, that are general to all faces. So we'll leave that, that funny one there at the moment and I will go to my Photoshop screen and you can see um, what I'm talking about. Okay. When we draw portraits, obviously we're trying to get a likeness, but the basic proportions are very similar. So again, that width of that eye is about the same distance as between the eye and the width of that eye. And believe it or not, from that eye, oh, going crooked, down to um, the top of the nostril is more or less the same as the width of the eye. Um, that doesn't mean the whole nose, there is a V underneath there, and I usually just put a V, a V sort of shape. So we'll go back to our, um, 
you can see that there so if I put that onto my page that I'm going to use for my portraits I'm just going to put a line there now you can't see that I've just seen on my screen so I'm going to draw it stronger than you will and I'm going okay it's about that far apart so my eye width is about the same it's an eye width apart and I said that my eye down to my nostril is about the same so that's where my nostril nostrils are and you can see that it's as wide as the space between the eyes so for argument's sake I'm just putting a V in now I was going to say of course we want a likeness and if we draw everybody in the same way how are we going to get a likeness well the proportions are a more or less they're a starting point for us and we will come back later to get the actual likeness in now that eye width apart which I find a very useful measure is also believe it or not more or less the same so that distance there from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the mouth not the middle of the mouth or the top of the mouth that's about the same as an eye width as well and the mouth is generally halfway between halfway through the eyes so right in the middle of of the pupil and the mouth so the the um, middle part of the mouth is as wide as the pupils so I'm just putting that line in so this is just a generic face at the moment you can see that I've actually put the middle of the mouth going down a bit in my photograph next to you my mouth is actually quite straight because I'm smiling a bit but if you look at um, portraits where somebody is not smiling the center of their mouth actually goes down okay um, so that was the the bottom of the mouth and the top of the mouth is going to go above that center of the mouth now my lips are quite thin so this is not a self-portrait at the moment it's giving you the information about what our self-portrait is going to look like now let me point out that the shadow underneath my lip that you can see is not the bottom lip my lips are thin and so the shadow underneath is literally underneath like that okay so so far I am just showing you a couple of proportions now the next thing I want you to take care to note is how far away the side of the head is from the eye many books will tell you that that distance is about an eye width as well I don't usually find that at all if you want to you can bring your photograph up and actually measure so if that's my eye width apart you can see that the head the side of my face is well under an eye so I am marking in where the side of my face is and you can see why I didn't want to put the side of my the whole shape of my head in first even though this at the moment is not a self-portrait um, it's just a couple of heads up things for you to have a look at what the next thing I want you to notice is that the nose seems to go up into the eyebrow don't miss the shape between the eyebrow and the top of the eye now I haven't put my eye in I'm going to do that now or an eye in notice also that the height of the eye is a little bit to the left I'll get rid of those marks those red marks so that you can actually see what the face looks like without them and in fact now that I've put the top of my um, eyelid in I can see that my eyebrow is much higher and I shouldn't have actually put the whole 
eyebrow in I should have just put a marker as to where they are and they run along the top socket of this eye socket and the inside of the eye the eyeball forms on that eye socket so clearly that one is in the wrong place now you can see why you don't put the whole thing in you just put some markers where they are heads up I know you can't see my ears properly but you can actually see that the bottom of the ears my ear is about the same level maybe just below as where the nose is and the top of my ear actually disappears into my hair but if you, I were to push my hair back and I will show you that for a second because I like playing with my technology you can see that the bottom of my nose pretty much matches with the bottom of my ears and the top of my ears pretty much matches with my eyebrows or halfway between my eyebrows um, how's that for a clicker tr uh, clever trick okay so ears are much bigger than you think they are if you can see the top of them they match with the top of or somewhere between the brow and the eye okay the next heads up I'm going to give you heads up I didn't mean that pun but that's a nice pun is how wide is the face from the edge of the lips to the side of the face so we have some cheek happening here we don't cut across like that I've seen many portraits that cut across like that and the distance from the bottom of the lip to the chin is about the same once again as the distance from the nose down actually let's just check that I'm known to be wrong so once again check with your little bit of paper that's to the bottom of my mouth yep that's more or less to where my chin is so that original let's see that's still my eye width so that's a really good measure so on my drawing I'm gonna go that's about where my chin finishes so make sure when you put the chin in that it is a decent distance away from the bottom of the mouth I've seen many portraits that cut off the chin like that that there's a fair whack of head there and it doesn't go across there so your jawline actually starts turning in a little bit below your face and that is a much more accurate place to put your chin okay so looking at this my jawline starts to turn there which is well under my lips okay don't turn it in like a pixie chin opposite the mouth okay we also probably know that as I mentioned before the eyes are halfway between the bottom of the chin and the top of the head and so it's quite useful it's the same as my pencil so I can put a mark there as to where the top of my head is and if I wanted to I could do that that now looks like a very very elongated head so I think I might have measured something too long somewhere so that's an, another reason why we are not drawing all these hard lines in I'm drawing them in so that you can see what's going on you just need some reference points okay another reason why this is looking so narrow is that I haven't put any hair in and once again if I look at my photograph 
the width of my hair there is way wider than that so it my hair comes out to about there I could of course also measure my head across where the eyes are and say how big is that compared to my head and it's about just up to the top of my brow so if I my pencil's too small if I go from the top of the brow to the bottom of my chin and I compare that to the width yep that actually is not bad so that elongated length is probably because I haven't put my hair in yet and remember that's not the top of my forehead it is the top of my hair my hair actually is down there somewhere and out here ah that's the side of my face no hang on a sec I'm getting confused that's the side of my face that's my hair over there so you can see that um, my hair is going to let's put that bit of ear in there So now you're beginning to see that that elongated face that my head my head told me was way too elongated is now looking a lot better. So whenever I'm putting these marks down, I'm looking where are they with reference to things I've already drawn. Have a look at where the shoulder comes out of my neck. I haven't put my neck in actually. There's my neck and my shoulder. I know that I'm sitting a bit crooked in that picture. My shoulder is cutting across a little way above where my neck is. Where my chin is, sorry. And this hair goes way down here. So, and I noticed when um, I was putting my the sweep of my hair in it's touching my eyebrows so I've actually gone ahead a few steps because I've gone from putting the marks in to now starting to place um, other bits of pieces in which is a very reasonable thing to do but you do need to start with those proportions so even though you've got a line in the middle of your eye that's all adjustable it's just a lot easier to adjust that than have a full eye already drawn okay i've put rather heavy lines here um i was about to rub it out and i think i will just carry on so the point of drawing is not to be perfect at it, in my opinion. The point of drawing is to enjoy what is it is that you're doing. I'm now looking at some negative shapes or, or shapes, complete shapes, actually not necessarily negative shapes. Can you see that there's actually a vertical there, whereas I've swung it in like that? So I'm going to take that vertical up. And I'm going to change it to be to emulate that shape so that is the negative shape that my hair is making and it wasn't that pointy shape that I had there so I I check myself all the time to look for those shapes and this time I will rub something out because that's going to irritate me I can also put my pencil down and see where is my pencil, where is my, my path relative to my eye and it is directly above um, about that section of my eye and that's where my hair sweeps down. If that's going to be where my brow is, my hair sweeps up there. I find that hairstyles are very, very um, important in getting a likeness I know people say that the eyes are but at this stage getting the hair so I'm using a trusty kneadable eraser 
I'm probably adjusting a little bit too much, but I'm much more happy with that whole shape there. So I tend to try and draw with shapes rather than features. So again, if I look at the shape between my eye and my, um, or between my eye, um, eyelid, the shape of that shadow, I can actually put that in quite nicely and it goes into the side of my nose like that. There is a little bit of a highlight there and there's nothing wrong with putting in that shading, even at that level. Now, remember, I just put that circle in as a demonstration to you that that's where my eyeball is. However, I'm actually not going to bother to rub it out. There's nothing wrong with having um, some structure lines on your, on your work. And now I've just noticed that I haven't left any face between my hair and my eye. So you've constantly got to be checking. I probably should have marked in the side of my hair before I actually started drawing my hair. So these are all traps that we fall into. Just showing you on the eye. Generally, the bottom lid is much flatter than the top lid. And the tear duct is at the bottom of that eye. I am going to lighten off that line because we don't have a line right through. Your irises are complete circles. And your eyelid cuts across that circle and the tear duct is on the bottom there. So don't draw an oval for your iris. And you can see that my top lid goes over my bottom lid there. And I like, even if you've got light blue eyes, your eyes are in the shadow of your brow and they are in the shadow of this eyelid and your eyelashes. So I like to put in a tone there as well. Okay, so I'm going to soften off that as well. And my tear duct is going to be at, on the bottom edge. Let's put that, it's easier to put that circle in first and then draw your eye around that, have it cut off. And it actually comes quite low like that. And as I said before, did I say before that this eye is, for me, is smaller than the other eye? from that distance there. So I'm just going to rub off a little bit of the top there. So I have the same instinct as you do. I was about to put eyelashes on and things like that. Don't do it. Try not to do it. There's the edge of that eyeball there. The eyeball doesn't go all the way across. It ends about there. Ooh. So that was something that I told you that was incorrect, which was that the eyeball went into that circle. The eyeball is actually there and not there. So what's that done to my work? <laughs> I think that's okay. Now I've still got shadow across the top of that. And that shadow, if I look at the shape there, I've got a highlight on my top lid and I've got a shadow there and you can hardly see my eyebrows. They blend into those shadows. They're not very dark. So don't worry about putting just those um, shapes in. I think that I have got um, a little bit of a likeness there happening. So far, so good. Now, one of my bugbears when people do portraits is they leave the whites of the eye white. And as I've just mentioned, um, the eyes are 
in the shadow of your eyelashes and the lids, the thick piece of, of flesh there, and your brow. So you can see that my eyes are quite dark or in shade. And as the eyeball goes into the head, in the corner they are a little bit darker even. Okay, don't feel that you have to put very dark pupils on. You can hardly see the difference between my pupils and my dark eyes. Of course, if you've got lighter eyes, you might. Try not to put heavy lines around your, um, your features. I have at the moment got that heavy line. And I'm going to lighten that because... If you look closely at the photograph, there is the bit of flesh under my eye, which is going to be light. Before the shadow underneath, so that's not actually showing up, so I've just adjusted that. And by putting some tone on the eye there, you can show the difference between the shadow on the eye and the highlight on that bottom lid. And then we have shadow underneath the eye. And it's a bit darker on the side. So remember before when I was showing you those shadows, this shadow goes right into my hairline there. Don't be afraid of putting those shadows on. Even at this stage, they give you a very good set of shapes to work with. And this shadow goes into the side of the nose. This shadow goes into the side of the nose as well and goes into the shadow of my hair. Now I have got... I'm smiling a little bit, so I've got a shape of tone of highlight there. I've got a shape of highlight there. And I'm going to put some shading underneath. And I'm putting it in pretty rough and ready. I'm going to put, I'm now going to draw a nose a little bit better than I have there. And I am it's the nostril that is as wide as the eye so my nose is actually there but there aren't actually lines there there's some soft shading so try not to put harsh lines on your nose there they are gentle lines which show shading on either side of the nose this line down there was for me to show you that the line down is matching the eye and i'm actually going to rub out that v that i put in that was just um, a structural v so now i can put my nostrils in and they kind of curl under there don't overdo the dark of the nostrils. We don't want to see a big, fat, black nostril like that. That doesn't exist. The whole of the underside of the nose is in shadow. So if I squint my eyes, which is one of my usual tricks to see the shapes of tone, I'm surprised that I haven't told you that already. I can see there's kind of a bird shape there. The nub of my nose is in highlight, but that's all in shadow there. And within that shadow, there's a little subtle, or well, sort of subtle, that's the nub of my nose. There's a sort of quite small nostril. It's not really that big. Obviously, if you've taken a photograph from looking up, then it will be bigger. 
and you can see that the tone on the bottom of my nose actually goes right into the tone that is created on that shadow of my nose on my face. And in, in the instance of my photograph, it actually blends into the nose. How's that looking? Yep, that's working. But I'm going to do that line down from my head. The, the shadow is a bit stronger here, which shows where that nostril is. And the shadow is a bit stronger here, which shows where that nostril is. This line between the mouth and the nose is called the philtrum, and it often has a lovely shadow on it. Not that I have one this inst in this instance. Okay, now I need to change this to suit me. Remember I said that my mouth wasn't going down, it was going across. So if I actually look at the shape of the, where my mouth is, meets where the top lip and the bottom lip meet I will need to rub that out so that's looking a bit better I haven't also got my smiling face which is pulling pushing my cheeks out a bit I am rushing a little bit and generally speaking, the top lip is in shadow. I'm not wearing any makeup. So the top of my lip is actually disappearing into the tone of my skin. There is a bit of a highlight on the top of my um, bottom lip. But there's also the shadow of my top lip on my bottom lip. So what I mean is, that tiny bit there is not only the strength of the of the the my mouth and uh, there is a small shadow on the lip as well and in fact i haven't got a very strong bottom lip it's not protruding a lot so the shadow under my lip is not particularly strong either however I do of course have a dip in my chin now what was I doing here ah that was the line that I was saying don't do that pixie chin make sure the chin and you can see the distance from there to there is quite a lot I've got a little dip in my chin that's about halfway so the shadow is quite a full shadow. Don't be afraid of those shadows. And the line that I drew here is very, very harsh. There's a very soft change. Ah, before I get into that, what I want to do is bring this shadow down and get this line happening. Now, there's another shape that you can look at, the shape between the nose and the, the side there and the mouth. So that is quite a helpful little shape to, um, to look at um, rather than looking at the features. What is that shape? On the portrait that I did of my dad quite a while ago, it was one of the beautiful things that I did after he died. Um, I call that trumpet smile because he had big trumpets like that staring up. Can you see that I've also got those trumpets? A little bit. Okay, so I was, I distracted myself there. I'm putting in some shadows here. And I'm just quickly chucking them in. And they are meeting the shadow under my chin. So I've got shadow under my cheeks because I'm smiling a little bit. And there's shadow cast here. So can you see that the head is actually forming? 
the form of the head, which means the three-dimensional nature of the head, is forming as we bring in these shadows. Now, I'm not sure that I've got, well, I am sure that I have not got a likeness of me. I think perhaps if I if I worked a bit more, and I might do that after this video ends, so that I can show you that I did eventually get a likeness of me. This is looking very much like my younger, thinner self at the moment. I'm going to soften those shadows. I can see um, my neck. So I'm looking at that point there, which is the, the tip of that triangle, and I'm lying in it up. Where is it with reference to something I've already done? It's about where my nose is. Yep, it's about there. And I've got this crease in my neck. And when you get to a certain age, you get these jowls happening. And this shadow is going to go into the shadow underneath, into my neck. And my neck is coming down there. That's it. And then across there. Now, there is a lovely little highlight, thank goodness along the edge of my cheek there so I'm using my kneadable eraser to just lighten that up my lines were way too heavy the only pencil that I'm using is a 2b pencil by the way so we want to see my cheek there only because the, of the change in tone between my neck and my chin And so that's my neck and there's a crease there. Do me a favor, when you are putting in wrinkles and creases and things like that, don't put a jolly big great um, line across. I know we think that everybody can see them. So I've got a couple of laugh lines there. Just put them in very gently. It's all you need to suggest them. You really don't need uh, big heavy lines. I'll just, as soon as I put some dark next to, or on top of my hair, but next to my face. Oh, once again, look at that. I can't believe I've gone in there. I keep on wanting to make my face narrower. But there's space between my eye and my hair. Ah, now I've noticed it isn't as wide. So I'm second guessing myself all the time. And the only way I can stop myself from doing that or get it more accurate is by going back to the photograph and observing. So my head is playing tricks on me. It's going, do this, do that, do this, do that. And I'm going, trying not to listen to it and trying to follow my observation. I'm going to darken my eyes because I put that tone right the way across my eyeballs. So that's looking at a little bit stronger. Um, so I am literally still putting in my shapes of tone and I'm chucking them in pretty quickly. Not looking too, too bad. Actually, I think it's better than some other portraits I've done of myself. Um, I think I'm going to leave you there with um, how to go about your portraits. I might just put in my crooked little shoulders. So if I look at where this shoulder is, it's 
halfway down my jowls here. Uh, another tip please to remember is that your neck is much wider than you think it is although I'd actually drawn it I've got some dark there I'd actually drawn it a bit wide but don't put your tiny little neck in there and also don't take your shoulders off the page like that my shoulders don't exist in this photograph but in actuality your shoulders if you measure your head like that your shoulders are as wide as your head so my shoulder would easily come out to there and on the other side would come out to there we often underestimate how big our shoulders are so try not to do that so that looks like a funny shoulder over there now so I'm just putting that harsh I might go to my 6B pencil and um, I think I'll stop there because I am fiddling um, there's certainly the beginning of a self-portrait what I'd really like to tell you about is I have a group called get drawing and it is an exclusive Facebook group if you're on Facebook so you need to ask to join that group and the reason it's called get drawing is because I have written a book and it's called get drawing and it's all um, the way I teach in my studio it will be published this year at the moment it's sitting with my editor and I'm speaking to my designer about how to design it so I'm trying to get that out as quickly as possible hopefully by the end of the year it will be out even if it's not published in a hardback or hardcover it will be published online so if you would like more information about that um, please go to my website which is simply www.karenfrankel or one word dot com and click on get drawing and you'll be able to join that um, my email list where you get uh, weekly emails about what I'm going to be doing in a live Facebook video and those videos are also on YouTube so I've got lots of things for you to look at thanks for watching it's been an absolute pleasure doing this demonstration for you bye bye